What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Before we get into those pitches, remember, hit that subscribe button. It helps make sure you never miss any of the filthy pitches or interviews, but it also helps me get the best pitchers for those interviews. So hit subscribe, and without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Paul Blackburn, who threw six and two-thirds shutout innings. His ERA is now 1.74. Next, we have Ranger Suarez, who had seven Ks in six shutout innings, relying on his sinker, his slider, and filthy changeup. Next, we have Noah Syndergaard, who had seven Ks in seven and a third innings, and Thor only gave up one run. He had a filthy sinker working, and Thor had an absolute hammer, and John Tumpane the Ripper had an absolute knife. Adding another hitter to the Infinity Day IL. Luis Castillo was finally back in action, had these wicked sinkers, and his beautiful changeup. I almost forgot how much I missed this thing. Castillo's changeup is pure art. Kyle Hendricks threw eight and two-thirds shutout innings with seven Ks, relying on his sinker and changeup combo. And I love watching Hendricks pitch. Check out this combo. Throws an inside fastball, speeding up Grisham's bat, and then throws a changeup off of that. That, my friends, is pure pitching. And look how well he repeats his mechanics. Just a master. And I mentioned he threw eight and two-thirds innings of shutout ball. He was taken out after 116 pitches. And look at his reaction. I mean, dude's got a smile on his face. Kyle never smiles. He could strike out 27 and he wouldn't smile. Of course, then he goes right back into robot mode. Carlos Rodon was simply overpowering. He had 12 Ks and just shoves the baseball down hitters' throats. An overwhelming mix of sliders and fastballs. He picked up his 10th K on this White Castle special. And for those new here, a White Castle special are three disgusting sliders. Rodon was just toying with hitters. Look at this K strut here. It's like he's disgusted that hitters even think they have a chance against him. And check him out messing with timing. I mean, this pause, I swear, I thought my computer had frozen. Rodon's just making crap up as he goes along. One of the unique things about Rodon is his very high release point. He releases his pitches at about six and a half feet off the ground. He uses his high release point to his advantage. It's very unusual. In fact, according to Codify Baseball, of all left-handed starters with release points of six and a half feet, Rodon has 96% of all 95 mile an hour fastballs or higher from that higher release point. That unique release point is one of the keys to his success. Rodon now has 53 Ks in only 35 innings. Nasty Nestor Cortez had one of the most dominant outings of the year so far. He took a no hitter into the eighth inning and had 11 Ks, a lethal combo of cutters and fastballs. One of the keys to his success is his inventiveness on the bump. Look at this. Here are back-to-back 91-mile-an-hour -back fastballs, and look at him change his arm angles on those fastballs. Here's his mechanics on those two 91-mile-an-hour fastballs overlaid, and you can see the difference in those arm angles. That is a nightmare for hitters. They don't know where the ball's coming from. Absolutely crazy stuff. My filthiest starter yesterday was Michael Kopech. Kopech threw six innings, gave up no earned runs, and had seven Ks. And look at this stuff. Just an overpowering elevated fastball and threw sliders and curveballs off of it. These overlays show just how hard it is to hit off Kopech. And before you scream at a hitter for swinging at a pitch that doesn't make it to a plate, check out this overlay of Kopech's 94-mile-an-hour fastball and a slider in the dirt. You can see why Kopech has an ERA this season of .93. One other thing you'll notice is how Kopech throws a lot of elevated fastballs. Here's Dylan Cease telling us why. You play catch with Michael Kopech, and you watch him, you watch him live and from behind, and all you see is hitters swinging and missing at fastballs, and you're like, that looks like it's right down the middle. What's going on? You play catch with him, and he'll throw one that starts at your chest, and you're, you feel like it's going to hit you in the head. That's how much life it has. So it's like, all right, I understand why hitters swing and miss at that. It's cool. It's cool. I, I wish fans could. I mean, I'll, fans wouldn't be able to catch it probably, but I, it would be cool if, if people could experience that. I dropped the entire interview yesterday afternoon, so check it out. Now on to some relief pitchers. Joe Kelly is back in action. He is an elite psychopath. 
Check out this 98 mile an hour sinker with 15 inches of arm side run. And I don't know why, but he's varying looks with no runners on base. I mean, he's trying to keep the invisible runner in his head close. Felix Bautista had this overpowering stuff. I mean, look at his 100 mile an hour fastball. And here's a look at the big man's mechanics. Lastly, everyone's favorite reliever, Jimmy the Human Glitch Herget, was in action. And here's a filthy sinker slider combo. He gets a swing on that slider way off the plate, likely because that sinker ran 19 inches to the plate. As a hitter, you really can't pick up the spin on that slider because it starts so far off the plate, and you have to guess. In this case, Zanino guessed wrong. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. We have ourselves a pitch com fail. Just the audio. Go strike. Go strike. Go strike. 